everybody, this is the What School Could Be in Hawaii podcast. I'm your host, Josh Rapun. We're here today with Trish Morgan from Stevenson Intermediate School here on Oahu. Trish, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, Trish, we, we normally do this sort of bio thing at the beginning of every episode, but I'm going to break out of that a little bit here at the start. Um, and I want to want to have fun with your resume. Um <laughs> Because your resume is a pretty awesome resume. Um, so because we're talking so much about assessments these days and about different approaches to assessments, and we're also talking about profiles of graduates, we're talking about mastery and mastery transcripts, and all kinds of things that are represent breakouts from traditional GPAs, the SAT score, the transcript, and that sort of thing. So I was very struck in preparing for this moment um, with the materials that you sent to me, and including your resume, that you start your resume with what you call, quote-unquote, a qualifications profile. And I thought, wow, that's a pretty cool way to start a resume. So tell me, Trish, who are you? What can you do? And what do you know? <laughs> um, I'm Trish Morton. I am a teacher. I'm a STEM teacher and also an algebra teacher. Um, I'm the science department head and have leadership roles in the school. Um, I did not start out that way. I started out just as a regular math teacher in a school. Um, had awesome people around me who molded me into what I am today. Um, I was just a young, young teacher. I started out at 22 years old when I, when I began. And um, it wasn't until I came to Hawaii where I've always been pretty creative and I, I love anything that's fun for the kids because of the fact that I, I struggled in school and I was a middle of the road kid, but I was just never connected to what I was doing. Right. And I wanted to change that. And, and so I think that you know through my journey as an educator, um, what changed me most was when I came to Stevenson and then I got to actually apply all those, the creative skills that I had through STEM. Um, that's what pushes me even mm -hmm. now today. And that's who you are. Yes. What can you do? What can I do? <laughs> I, I can do many, many things that I've come to find out because, um, you know, I, I'm very techy all of a sudden. I didn't yeah. start out that way. Um, when I was in high school and going back, um, I became really good friends with my typing teacher because I was scared to death who, of the typing test. Who becomes friends with their <laughs> typing teacher? I've never I was so known scared anybody in my because life. I was I was not good at typing, and they would cover your hands. So I became really good friends with him so that he wouldn't cover my hands and that I could get a good grade because I was just not a techie wow. person. But I have learned that. YouTube is amazing. You can learn just about anything on YouTube. And because of that, now I am more techie. And now we can do many things that actually um, have been changing lives of others around us. Wow. My typing teacher, um, I guess I shouldn't say her name, um, was a character right out of a Halloween movie. Um, the, 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 <laughs> truly the scariest person I've ever been with in a classroom. Um, <laughs> and, um, and yet still, I learned how to type. Um, so... That's who you are, and that's what you can do. What do you What do you know, you Trish Morgan? What do you know? What do I know? <laughs> yeah, I think actually you just answered that question. Yeah, I think I did. Through YouTube. Through YouTube. I think the Many answer the <laughs> to the question of what do you know now is I'm holding it in my hand. Yeah. My phone. I can actually know anything that needs to be known. Mm -hmm. Is that a Is that a thought for you now as you're working with kids? Is that they're walking around? with devices on their beings that give them almost unlimited access to knowledge. Absolutely. I mean, how, does, how does that play out? Uh, a, lot of things, a lot of people see technology as kind of a hindrance, but honestly, I mean, that's one of the best tools that the kids have. And I realize that, and I want to, have, I want to show the kids how they can use it in a positive way. Right. And that, for me as an educator, is... You know, you guys are so lucky to have these devices. Yeah, we need to teach you how to use it correctly um, and for, for positive things. But in my program at, at Stevenson with our STEM program, they can use technology to literally transform a life of someone else 
maybe someone with a disability or um, a kapuna, and they can make advances for them that will change their lives. Just even small tasks that are difficult for them on a daily basis, they can create assist assistive technology devices that will help them. We're going to get into those specific examples of ways that your kids are impacting lives in a little bit. Um, Trish, on your resume, you list five notable accomplishments. Those are bullets on your resume. Um, what are the top two notable accomplishments of your life um, so far? Of my life. Well, it's your resume, so I'm assuming it's your, <laughs> it's your life. Um, you know... Your professional life. My perfect okay, there we go. Sorry, that, so, got, that got very wrong. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. So professional life, I would say um, the things that we've done with, again, like assistive technology. Mm -hmm. um, and then also just the school connectedness mm -hmm. that we've provided through the classroom for the kids. What just is school using, connectedness? Um, just understanding the student's voice, bringing the student voice, and then helping them explore their passions. Right. And so you also bullet 10 relevant experiences since 2013, mm -hmm. uh, 2013 to the present, 10 relevant experiences. Um, what are a couple really important experiences, relevant experiences between 2013 when you first came to Stevenson, right? And today? Um, okay, so one of the biggest experiences that really set everything off was um, I was presenting at a conference and someone came up to me and he said hey you know I appreciate everything you guys are doing in the STEM field um, I have a friend who's also he's she's an alumni of your school and um, she's a quadruple prosthetist and she needs a, a prosthetic. I mean, we've been searching everywhere to find someone who can 3D print something for her. Wow. And we have been unsuccessful. Would you be only willing to give a shot? And so I said, yeah, we can. I mean, that sounds really exciting. Let's do it, you know? But um, truth is, I didn't even have a 3D printer. So we, we had her come to the school and I mentioned it to three students. They're like my children, you know, really close to it. And they were so excited about it. They said, yeah, that's right, that's right. So wow. she comes down to the school, we meet her. Um, she had necrotizing fasciitis. And so she had lost her um, right arm up right. to about the forearm, um, missing four, the fingertips on the left hand, and then also half of both of her feet. So, I mean, just building based on empathy, um, I, I can't even tell you the maturity that my kids had. When we went in and we met her, we, it, it was tough. Like, we, we felt for her. Like, we really wanted to help her. She showed us two prosthetics that she had. She had um, two professionally made prosthetics. They were both about twelve to $15,000 each, but she was frustrated. And you could see the frustration because, I mean, she's like an ex- I, I think prosecutor, but at least, you know, a lawyer, and she uh, had a very successful career, and here she is struggling, and she's got these two prosthetics. One of them was in the shape at the end with, like, an okay sign, so when she was able to move her arm, then she could pick things up with, like, an okay fingertip. Right. The other was um, with, like, a hook, and so she wanted something that was more natural looking, mm -hmm. and she wanted more movement. And so that's what we were set up to do. Your team swung into action. Yeah. So we, we wanted to build something for her based on her needs so that she got exactly what she wanted. So we went to work. First two weeks, nothing was done. I was scared. I, we gave her hope, you know. And one of my students, finally after two weeks, and, and you know, as a teacher, what are you doing? Where's your research? What are you, what are you coming up with? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And he's a smart kid. Um, and finally, he came in, he sat down at my desk, and he goes, I got it. And he sat there all day. What did he get? And he was cranking out the design and custom built it exactly how she needed, wow. tailored to her. Uh, there were things that he could do that I couldn't do, and there vice versa. And so we were able to, within a month and a half, fashion uh 
prosthetic arm for her um, that fully functioned. We even gave it like a, a French manicure because she's a classy lady. So we just wanted to give her something that was super natural. And it was, it was amazing because she was actually able to not only pick things up, which was through elbow action, but she was able to throw for the first time in about a year since she had she could throw yeah, something yeah, she, was able to, she was able to pick something up and throw sure sure that's movies. crazy business it's amazing i cannot even believe just looking back i don't know how we were able to get it done but um okay the, so I have, the kids so I, are amazing so i have kid i have a question about what what's the can you give me the first name of the kid who came up with the, the like i got it yeah it's mainly charlie charlie yeah. so charlie like what happened with charlie like what what was that moment where it just, where the light bulb went on? Do you know? You know, we had been researching a whole bunch of designs and, you know, we had a whole bunch of failed prints um, and then just like different, you know, the Enable community we looked out there yeah. and we were trying to find things. And then there was all these coding issues that we had and it was tough. Like things weren't making sense to us because we're new to this, you know, we're in, mm -hmm. we, we weren't professional uh, 3D printers and we hadn't worked with the software and we were, we were looking at YouTube, you know, cause that's, that's my savior at the moment. So we were looking at that, but it was, it was all over the board. You know, there's all these different software like SketchUp and you have Tinkercad, all these different things that we're trying to piece everything together. We didn't really know what we were doing. We kept failing, but we were failing forward, we kept on making little advancements. Right. So it was frustrating, but we weren't, gonna give up because we knew that she we gave her hope we wanted to do something wow. for her once you give somebody hope you can't give up on that you cannot you've given it. wow <laughs> that's just that's extraordinary um trish and everybody out there in radio land stay with us we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about some other crazy things that have happened in your imaginarium up there at stevenson <laughs> intermediate we'll be right back Okay, that was a rough beginning. Are you, <laughs> who are you? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. You cannot, you cannot I'm Trish Morgan. I warned you sorry, last night. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> yeah, All right, everybody smile. smile. I'm going one, in a two, roundabout three. circle. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay, ready? Ah. <laughs> yes. Hey, everybody, we're back. This is the What School Could Be at Hawaii podcast, and we're here with Trish Morgan from Stevenson Intermediate here on Oahu. Uh, Trish, I want to dig a little bit deeper into some of the wild and crazy things that have happened um, uh, under your your coaching, your mentoring, your guiding um, up there at Stevenson. So um, you sent me some biographic material, a bunch of links. Um, some of them were two news stories. Um, one of them was actually about the story that you just described where you guys built the prosthetic arm for a client. Um, you sent me another link to a KITV4 story here um, where you had students working with um, hearing impaired individuals and hearing impaired students to, de to, to develop coding or to code for them. So you can, can you describe that project for us? Totally. I'm so excited about this. This is, <laughs> this is brand new for us. Yeah. So um, over at White School for Deaf and Blind, Tom Graham, awesome guy, love him. So he uh, is trying to get a lot of computer science going at the school. And I've seen him at a lot of different conferences and stuff. And I was talking to him over the summer and he came to one of my workshops that I did on Arduino, which is um, coding with electronics, right? So programming electronic devices. And I said, hey, wait, I got an idea. How about instead of you having to go learn all this, how about you bring your kids over and then my students, once they've learned the unit, they can teach yours. Wow. So we buddied up. So I wrote a different grant. Uh, thankfully, we got $2,000 from Voya. So thank you, Voya. And um, we started this past Monday. My students are uh, mentoring the, the high school students there. So the first phase of the project is just teaching them simultaneously um, electronics and also programming so they're they're learning both of those components and they are creating different devices and then the second phase of the project will be to collaborate on actual assistive technology projects for the deaf and the blind wow. and that's something i'm really excited about because um last year 
one of our students uh, for their science fair project, she used Arduino and we were able to develop a sensor for a visually impaired student at our school. Right. And uh, she's actually losing more and more of her vision where eventually she will be blind. And we have another volunteer at our, our school with the same situation. So we want to take care of them and, and um, help them any way that we can so that we can make their lives better. So we've taken her project and already we've made advancements. So before, when you walk um, and there's there's a object in the way, it will just go beep, 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 right? So it will beep, but um, now we've actually got it so there's a proximity involved. So just like a backup sensor in the car, it beeps progressively louder the closer you get to an object. So that's right. one of the advances that we've made. Now the other part we're working on is that helps with objects, but it doesn't sense humans. So we are adding in that component right now. So we have all the students doing research. We're getting very, very close. And once we have that, then we got both ends covered. So when, when they walk down the hallway or anywhere, um, that's like your backup buddy. It's like, you know, it's got your back. We call it, our, the project is called actually, Got Your Six. So it's called Got Your Six device. And so when they walk anywhere, you can attach it to um, something or you can carry it, mm -hmm. or we even have it on the fanny pack. So it's, it's up to the user and how they want to wear it, whatever they're comfortable with. But um, the development that we want by the end of the year is so that when they walk they, they have that comfort of knowing, you know, something's in their way, whether it's a human or an object. So six meaning six cents? Is got your six, like your military six? term, like I got you back. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, was like, okay. I was thinking six cents because you know <laughs> all no. the senses are in play. But really that's actually what, what's happening is that your yeah. kids are making it possible to have all of the senses come into play yeah. to help you as you're navigating through your day. Yeah. You sent me a, a video clip, again a news story mm -hmm. um, that was on Hawaii News Now, I believe, um, about that moment when you first introduced the device at, in its first iteration mm -hmm. to the young woman whose sight is progressively deteriorating. I know it's hard sometimes to describe moments like that. but. What was that moment like when you guys were all together um, and that you gave that device to her and she began to use it for the first time? Proud of my students. Wow, I can imagine. Um, I mean, they're, they're difficult projects. It's, it's based on faith, you know, that something's going to work. Right. Um, and, and what I saw there in that clip was the students were all standing around and she put it on for the first time and it, I couldn't quite hear the audio of the kids in that moment, but what it seemed like they were doing was they were already sort of iterating in that moment. That that yeah. they were that it, there was emotion in the moment because she was wearing it for the first time, but they were actually already thinking ahead. Yeah. Like was that is that what was going on? Absolutely. Every time, and, and that's the funny thing is every time the news has come, um, it's been scary because it, it's it's the fitting. <laughs> you know, right. so we're we're just thinking in our minds, what if this doesn't work? You right. know, and so that you can you can see, it. oh yeah. yeah. So um, it, it's in my mind, I'm my mind's racing every time they've come because I'm thinking, what if this doesn't work? You know, this is I'm thinking of the kids. You want them to be successful, but it's not even about that. We we all know that you know all these devices that we're trying to create. Um, the prototypes, and we're just trying to always make them better. Right. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, but we're doing what we can and right. trying to pay it forward with all the tools that we've been given right. and take it and then make someone else's life better. You sent me another clip, um, this one also from Hawaii News Now, um, KGMB, KHNL here in Hawaii. So let, let Trish, let me see if I've got this right. <laughs> so. You got STEM students using 3D printers to create prosthetic fingers for a classmate yeah. whose fingers are were, were missing for, mm. for some reason. Mm -hmm. Like, what was that project about? So, um, after we made the prosthetic arm, um, success is contagious, right? So we had students running in, and they were they they were my new students for the year. They'd say, 
do we get to make prosthetics? And I'd say, yeah, but we got to find a client, you know? So um, I was trying to f work through different agencies and try to see, you know, uh, wounded warriors wow. and, and different. And so I was trying to, to see if I could get other people in line. Um, it was difficult. I couldn't really find a client. But then a teacher at our school approached me and said, well, we have a student who was born without four fingers on his left hand. Do you think he can make fingers? I was like, who is he? Send him to me, you know? So uh, we go and we meet him, and, and we're not scared anymore. We're going to take anything on. So um, at first, you know, we got this vibe like he wasn't really into it, actually. And so I was really trying to be very sensitive to him where I thought, oh, no, I don't know if he wants this, you know? But then we backed off for about a week or two. And he was asking his teacher, are they coming? Like, are they coming? And and yeah. when she told me that, it changed my outlook on the whole project. So I told the kids that were working on the project, they're like, oh, let's go find him right now. So we did. So we go over and we find him and, um, you know, we, we got right back on the project. And he's involved in the project too. So it was important to him that there were black fingers and, you know, he wanted it to function. So that when he moves his his um, his wrist, it's it's also activated, you know. Right. Um, so it's tension strung. Right. So we've been working on that, and so he was a seventh grader at the time. So last year's big accomplishments were um, we we made perfectly fit custom fingers for him. So they're perfectly wow. fit. Now from there, it's not perfect. Wow. So the the function of it is where we have trouble. So we want to take it and then get the, the tension string perfected wow. for him by the time he leaves this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we walked into the principal's office at the end of the year to show, you know, like what the kids did, this is awesome, you know? So it was that proud moment for them. So when they walked in and they showed him off and then he looked at me and he goes, can I be in your class next year? And I was oh, like, wow. yes. Right. Definitely. And so um, he, uh, first day of school, I, I walked in, he had a welcome um, assembly, and he runs up to me, like, he goes, Miss, I'm not in your class. And I said, what are you talking about? They said you could be in my class. And, and we, I even went to the register, it, it was set in stone, what happened? So next thing you knew, I, I guess you went and talked to admin or something, and next thing when I had STEM later on, he's sitting in my class. I was like, oh, perfect. So for him, I mean, this could be one of the most meaningful things that he learns in school, is he's gonna be able to sit there, he can make custom fingers for himself, and he knows best what he needs, so he can make advancements and help other kids and other people who have the same situation. Sweet yeah. kid. He also so. knows the heart and mind of, of future clients. Absolutely. Well, because he's been one. So that leads me, I'm just, Trish, I'm thinking about, you know, a prosthetic arm for a alum um, that working with um, hearing impaired students um, and coding and, and prosthetic fingers and, and sight navigation or sense navigation. But what, what's really striking me and was striking me while I was watching these news clips was just the subtext, sometimes not subtext, but actually quite, quite visible, of compassion and kindness and empathy that's running through all of this. And we all, we all know that design thinking starts with empathy, empathy. Mm -hmm. but I think my question around this is, like, how do you account for student gains in empathy and kindness and compassion? How, does, how do you account for that? How do you report it out? How do you let people know if I, Josh, am in your class and, and I've made considerable gains in compassion, how do you, how do you account for that? It's, it's more than anything, um, that comes through giving back to the client right. themselves. And it's just natural at that point. So anytime that they create any kind of device, um, everyone else sees it, mm. everyone around sees it. And, and I, like I said, that's contagious. People want to be a part of that. Um, but I mean, when, when kids are able to do research and they are able to really understand someone else's needs and feel like, hey, I can make a difference in one person's life, you're making a difference in more, because that spreads. Mm -hmm. So it's really the clients, in some ways, who are the account. Yeah. They're the ones who, did, who, who give you visible 
evidence or artifacts of a growing sense of compassion or kindness or yeah. empathy that's there for them. Yeah, because in the end, you, you're, that's your final grade, is like, wow. you know, how well does it fit for them? Right. That's awesome, Trish. Thank you, hey, everybody. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a moment to talk to Trish a little bit more about her projects. And also, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into assessments. We'll be right back. <laughs> I apologize. I'm now three for three. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, 26. Yeah. 26. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready? Hey, everybody. We're back. This is the What School Could Be in Hawaii podcast. I'm your host, Josh Rapun. And we're here with Trish Morgan from Stevenson Intermediate. Hey, Trish, in this final segment of our episode today, um, I want to talk a little bit more about assessments because this is now becoming a, um, a priority one, um, not only in Hawaii, but across the country and even around the world. Um, so given all the projects uh, that you've done with your students and the, the way also that you wrote your resume really is kind of a, a list of accomplishments and, and a list of things that you think that you have given to your students in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, um, I want to talk about the assessments piece. So what, what can you say with confidence your students can do? What do they know and who are they? So the biggest thing that's important to me is now that I know the importance of technology and I can, I, I see what it can do and the true real life um, applications that go right with that and the problem solving and how powerful that is when you combine all that um, that's a true assessment is make something real world so that you know it, it's not just a, a false assessment of you know like a, something right when i i'm gonna back up because when i started stem most of what I did, I, I didn't have real tools at all. I, I mean, I was using all these cheap supplementary materials because I didn't have much of a budget. Right. And I was trying to do things that would show the kids, you know, like Newton's laws and, and have them see, you know, that like, um, like crash test dummies and stuff like that, where they'd see the forces on a head on collision using just like junk, you know? Right. And, and then I'd reflect and I'd think, did they really see that? Like, did they really see Newton's laws in effect, you know? So mm. that's what always hit me. So I knew that if I got real tools, real tools where they could really make real devices and real things that would make a difference in the world, that's a much better assessment. Right. And they, they will see their impact. And, and so that's been kind of my journey and my mission is let's get these real tools into the kids' hands. Wow. So what can they do? Right. Oh, my goodness. They can do anything when they have Unbelievable. materials. Unbelievable. They can. Tools. Let's start listing them. They can, um, they can program electronics to make open-ended devices. When you and I grew up, yeah. most kits, they did one thing. You, know? you go right. buy a kit and you're all excited, it does one thing. This, open-ended. You know the powers in their hand, so they can they can program, they can um, 3D print and 3D model, but not just 3D print, 3D model anything. They can use that to make an impact, as we talked about in right. someone else's right. life. Whether it's making a tool right. to help someone, or if they're making a prosthetic mm -hmm. that's really going to have some kind of impact on someone's daily life. Um, what do your students know? What do they What do they know? What do they know? They know the power of technology. Mm -hmm. They know that they can use it in order to transform lives around them. They know that, you know, it, even if it wasn't their own device, they know that others have made an impact on other people's lives. Right. And who are they? Who, who are, are they? Students? Very, very, I would say, conscientious. Um, empathetic, and they're they're brave kids that aren't afraid. They're not afraid to fail. Wow, mm -hmm. brave, brave, definitely. And they're very. They seem to me, based on the clips that I watch, very self aware. Yeah. Of what's going on around them, which is part of the process of empathy, is that you're open 
to all the inputs that come in. So Trish, in the end though, the reality is that we have to report this to other people. We have to report it to um, someone who might be hiring one of your students or someone who might be accepting your student into a private school or into college or mm -hmm. something like that. So how do we have a conversation as a community, public, private, and charter uh, locally, nationally, globally, how do we have a conversation around figuring out how to report those kinds of things in ways that have, are different from what you and I have known in our education backgrounds, the typical transcript, the grades, the GPA, yeah. that sort of thing? I mean, we're, we're held to the standards, and it's, it's really just creating rich, meaningful experiences for the kids right. where they are assessed on the standards, but it's also for them um, open-ended, problem-based, so that when they leave the DOE or they leave, you know, the private or charter school, um, they can use all those skills that they have learned in open-ended experiences. So that, that makes them more hireable because they have all these tools and they know how to use them. And it's so powerful. And, I mean, just creating those assessments that prove that, right. whether it's public or not, you know, and... So when they, when they have those type of assessments, those are the most meaningful right. things that they're going to learn. So Trish, at this point, you know, we're, we're telling our audience that you are the recipient of a massive uh, award that came from State Farm, uh, went to five educators nationally, and this was last year, right, or the uh, year before. I think the year before. The year before, 2017. 17, yeah. You got that. And so you, we know that you used that award, which was $100,000, right? $100,000. That you used that to help build a, a, what you called an Imaginarium. Yeah, it's an Imaginarium like project. So yeah. really, actually, it spun into not just one room, but we started to outgrow ourselves. So um, we were fortunate to get two rooms. <laughs> and at that point, actually, the whole vision and mission changed a little bit because not only did we have this nice maker space, um, we also now have an innovation lab and the two rooms are used for two completely separate things. So in the makerspace, a lot of people are, are familiar with makerspace, mm -hmm. but that's for, you know, the kind of the things that we grew up with, kind of more home ec type of stuff. You know, there's right. sewing machines in there, the t-shirt the presses, vinyl cutters, power tools. Yeah. Um, but also something that was important to me is um, DJing. Because, you know, middle school kids, especially, they love their music. So, you know, it's just giving them those just lifelong skills that they can carry on with them. Right. Then on the Innovation Lab side, uh, we have all our brand new IMAX. We got um, green screen tech. We have uh, DSLR cameras. And we have the all just the different coding um, electronic kits like Arduino. And then all the 3D printers. And the whole... Um, the reason that we made that room is we want to stay cutting edge for the kids, for the sake of the kids. Right. Just keep them on the cutting edge. So again, it puts them on the forefront when, when they go to uh, get a job down the road. You know, they have all these skills that maybe other people don't have. So, so Trish, while I was going through all of this, on the one hand, I was just completely inspired both by your award um, and by the things that you've done with it. I mean, who who's not going to jump up out of their chair and cheer when we're talking about a prosthetic device for an alum of your school and or, or someone being able to use their fingers for the first time? But on the other hand, Trish, I, I wanted to bang my head on the table because it's like you got the 100,000, and what about all the kids out there? And I, I don't mean it I to know. sound like that. You know what? You know, you know where I'm going oh, with this, I, right? I totally understand. So it's like Definitely. how, Trish... How do we get to a point where every kid everywhere gets an opportunity to experience what your kids are experiencing? And, and I think that's why we're, we're trying to reach out to other schools like Hawaii mm -hmm. School for the Deaf and the Blind because um, we can partnerships and we can we can share with each other. You know, like if if I can take a burden off your back and teach have my kids teach your kids something. Right. You know, so you don't have to go and, and learn it yourself and you can be the learner. Right. I mean, that's just using your resources wisely right there, you know, right. and, and not only that, but for my students, when you're doing the talking, you're doing the most learning. So right. that's, that's a good experience for them. So I think that just the partnerships in general, bringing more community in to help us, 
Mm-hmm. Um, but it goes both ways. But we also got to take care of them. Right. I think one of the things that really knocks me out here is that typically when we think about these public-private partnerships or we think about situations like this, it's typically a really well-endowed private school that's got all those kinds of resources. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. may offer those resources to public schools, but you're a public middle school yeah. and you've you've got an endowment now in a way. And it's a multifaceted endowment because it's based on hope for people in the community and the things you can do. Right. And so here's an opportunity for you to actually pay that out into the community as a public school. And yeah. that to me is a knockout idea. Yeah, no, and actually that's that's the first thing I instill in the kids. I say, look, right. like they've got to know this. Yeah. We have all these tools and you know, it took a lot of effort to get these tools, but we're we're going to use them in ways that will pay it forward um, and take care of others in the community. But also, you know, you'd like you have to realize not everyone has this. You right. know, right. So, I. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Now, Trish, <laughs> this this time has gone by really fast, and I still have a number of things I want to ask you. So we'll do this relatively quickly. This will these will be brief. Um, I know that this is an impossible question to deal with in a brief way, but um, I want to talk briefly about artificial intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, can you say a word to our ed- to our educators and education leaders who are listening, and even to our business leaders and the public listening to this podcast? Like, what's AI to education now? AI to education, you know, again, <laughs> my whole approach is maybe different, but um, thinking of like biomedical and the advances that we can can um, make for others is unbelievable. I got a student right now, we're uh, working on an AI device that will scan moles and different things on your body to see if you have like melanoma based on the training of different pictures. What? So the advances that that offers, it's unbelievable. I mean, like if we can make it happen, we're, we're working on it, but I, I feel like we're close. Um, but again, like every every approach that we have with the, with the kids, it's it's let's give back to other people. Right. You know. Right. Um, I also want to just talk very briefly about business relationships. And so, mm-hmm. can you say a word to our listeners, especially educators who are interested in doing the kinds of things that you're doing, about what? Uh, how do you go about building a relationship with people in the business community? Um, you know. We have a strong partnership with UH, the pre-STEM Academy, right. and they've been University instrument- of yeah. So mm-hmm. they've been instrumental to us because, I mean, they they've given us so many different resources. Um, I think it's so powerful for the kids when we bring in professionals from the business community, and then you know, like things that they may not have ever been exposed to, mm. it could be that one presenter that changes their life and they decide, you know, I want to be a fireman or I want to um, go into construction. You know, it, those are the experiences the kids need the most. Right. So building partnerships with your local community is, that's, it's right. unbelievable. You know, but also, um, like I said before, it, it goes both ways. We can't just take, we got to give back to so if there's people in the community that see hey we got these tools and we can help you like we want to help you right come find us that's a good challenge for us right i think a a great example and i'll do a little horn tooting here is the partnership that this podcast series has developed with hawk media productions at keala kahey middle school and with their director matthew williams Um, and we have members of that team right here in the recording room with us they do all the post-production editing for this podcast uh, which is a real world experience for them and i i hate even using the word real world mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it's <laughs> like it's a partnership so yeah. not talking about the real world as if it's something else right? yeah, yeah um it's it's real right now just our vocabulary <laughs> right it's all about the vocabulary so trish here at the very end i'd like to ask guests um, on every episode if they could describe for us what they think what you think school could be? I think back just really to my own experience as a kid. I wasn't really connected and I want to change that. I want to make sure that, you know, school's a little more fun for the kids. And what would make it more fun is is these types of experiences where they feel like they are successful, even if it's a small success, that that will drive them to want to do more. Um, developing those business partnerships 
and bringing in communities so that, you know, they, they can see what's out there so that they have some kind of goal or, you know, just they know what they want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just thought business maybe, and that changed. Now I'm an educator, you know. But I think the, the earlier that they can see and get some kind of motivation behind them of what they want to do with their life, then that opens the door for like earlier internships and more opportunities for them. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Trish Morgan, extraordinary teacher <laughs> at Stevenson Intermediate. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you can cut out the entire first part of who are you because I'm, um, I'm a... Oh, <laughs>